<laughs> You're good. Okay, for any, anybody who doesn't know uh, who I am, I'm, I'm Kevin Hutch. I'm the uh, originator, Grand Poobah, whatever whatever design guy that come up with uh, this particular product, which uh, we, we feel is, is, is going to change the game of building structures and homes for the next series of years, up to 20 years, as long as the Americans come, uh, come together on hemp production and get past all the stigmas that's related with hemp. Hemp to marijuana, two different animals. I think we all know that in this, this crowd, right? One you smoke, one you use for medical reasons, the other you build stuff with, okay? I'm into the building aspect of it. It's been vilified for whatever reasons for the past 70 some years and over a number of, of conversations that I've had with people across the country, it doesn't make any sense anymore to, to, to continue to vilify something that has never hurt anyone. What we're doing with this particular plant and minerals, okay, is building materials. And when you have a building material that's like this, okay, you got countertops, you've got sinks, you've got bathtubs, you've got fireplaces, fireplace inserts, you've got homes, you've got uh, commercial buildings, you've got um, all sorts of retro applications that can be put into a home without being a toxic, without creating a toxic environment, period. It has a natural biocide to it. It's an antiseptic. Uh, fold uh, molds and, and, and funguses do not like to grow uh, because of the biocide application. And uh, termites, termites in Hawaii. You ever heard of termites in Hawaii? Anybody been to Hawaii? Well, they got wood termites, ground termites. They eat everybody. They 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 buy the the, the timber from us here in Washington State and Oregon, and they ship it to Hawaii. And within five years, their houses are termite poop. They eat it. Termites don't like hemp. So now they've got uh, something that they, they can actually do with that particular material. And Hawaii itself can grow piles of hemp on top of pineapples. All right, there's a lot of empty fields out there. Our application is, is pretty simple. <clears throat> we take a honeycomb. We slap two, two uh, slabs between it to make a wall. The honeycomb holds onto the hemp. That's your insulation. Makes it lighter, by 40% lighter than concrete. So we can do tilt-up construction. And tilt-up construction means that we can, as a factory setting, we can build this stuff in the factory in a day, okay? One week later, after a crew of people have come to the site and have done all of the, 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 the sewer, the electrical, the water, on the fifth day, the house shows up on, on a, uh, a trailer, a flatbed trailer in panels. With a crane, they pick the thing up, load it up on the, the foundation, and erect your house within an eight-hour period of time. And on Saturday, that means you can move in. We use the same same mud, okay, that we build these these panels with, as the glue. Now it's uh, add water. It's non-toxic. Pretty straightforward stuff. We we have no design limitations with this because we can actually we don't we're not we're not stuck making flat panels. We can do curvilinear structures. A lot of people go, oh, you can build me a dome. You can build this. Actually, yeah, we can actually build you the Taj Mahal or kind of any kind of Gothic architecture with all the, the geometric progressions of uh, um, sacred geometry inside of this because we use CAD CAM technology, CNC. So we're not limited. There's no design limitations with this whatsoever. A good representation of, of what we do is pretty much right here small-scale representation. If that's considered a honey, honeycomb, then we just backfill it with hemp. 
put the next one on top of that like you see here and you have a SIPS panel, a structurally integrated panel and we can run the water, the conduit, um, the electricity we can pre-mold all the electrical uh, connections and uh, can lighting, speakers, you name it. We can tune the whole house up and still be structural with inside of a panel. So whatever your mind can see, we can make with this stuff. And as you can see on, on, on this one here, this is part of the, part of the program. It's called a detent. So a detent's like a Lego. Male, female components. This is my kind of, you know, whatever excuse for a honeycomb. I was using Dixie cups for this. But I, I needed to make something that was, you know, pretty good size that would represent the actual wall of this. At 12 inches thick, this is 9, okay, but at 12 inches thick, you have an R80 value which puts your house in the net zero um, category. Add the solar and the wind components or anything else that is for environmental, uh, according to your region where you, where you park your home, and you can be net positive. Net zero means you're not paying any bills by living in your home. Net positive means that your house is paying you to live there. This stuff's cheap. I get it for 91 cents a kilo. 2,000 plus bucks for a ton. I need a ton to build a house, that's your insulation. Everything else is roughly about 1,500 bucks a ton. So for a 1,200 square foot house, we can build it for $12,000 to $8,500 in that slot. Add windows, add doors, add the greenhouse for your environmental scrubbing, your food production, and your heating and cooling, and now you have a passive solar home. And you get to go out and pick all your carrots out and you know eat everything that you want from your garden which is really important right now because the uh, the monsanto guys the uh, chemtrails that we don't have anything like that going on here today <laughs> today <laughs> which is good these are these are this this whole concept what it does is it it saves you all the money gives you a beneficial place to to hang your head gives a place for your, your children to grow up in a non-toxic environment and saves you money. It creates the economy, recreates the economy. Because if you're not a slave to your house and the bills thereof, then you got money to spend out in your community. And that's the whole premise. This, is, this was in, in response to the 2008 crash. So people would have a safe home without being ripped off by our government. And yeah, that might be a little bit much. Most most people don't don't understand my my involvement of or uh, I don't I don't like our government. I don't like anything that has to do with it because they vilify anything and everything. And if it's not not their way, it's the highway. Well, they do a lot of people like that, and I think it's totally unfair. So this is a response to what they've done to us that we as garage operators or upcoming upstarts or startup businesses can do for our communities and get us back into back into shape. Any questions? Mm -hmm. well, I do want to applaud you as well. Um, this is just, you know, for fun. Can you uh, color it or put Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Any uh, pigmentation is is really easy. Uh, most concrete pigments that that or you know the, the sealers and 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 um, um, colorants and such like that work with this. Very easy. Yeah, and you can also seal it, and you can um, you can you you can mold anything into it, yeah, which is really kind of cool. Technology a little bit. Yeah, the the mold technology is 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 it's flexible. So you know when I, I you see how I always go back to this one, right? The only reason I go back to this one is because it, it, it truly shows the SIPS panel configuration. What any wall would look like in your home if you were to, you know, cut it and take a cross section of it. Well, with the pigmentation, obviously you can see I've got two different colors. Okay. 
with with that particular kind of thing we're not limited to uh, textures and uh, designs gargoyles I like to say gargoyles gargoyles you want a gargoyle on your house we can put it on your house because it'll be in the mold and we use this flexible technology to actually do that with polyurethane polyurethane is the only thing that we use at, at, at the present time that gives us the, the the strength to hold on to the weight of the wet product as it cures. Now this this product cures in uh, roughly 28 days in mass. So if it was six inches thick, it would take 28 days. But since it's not six inches thick and we're only doing like these, these are 20, 20 millimeter pieces. We go to a maximum of 25 millimeter and we don't have to use rebar up to seven stories high. Because our, our compression rates on this is an estimated 11,000 pounds per square inch. Now once I get this stuff certified and those numbers crunch out for everybody, then I can go, yeah, it's 11,020 pounds, 11,007 or whatever. But the, the point is, is that we're, we're reducing the labor aspect of building homes altogether, okay? And keeping the people that we do hire to to come in there and, and the forward team keeping their wages higher so we, we cross over with the, the timber guys okay wood framers and the carpenters and this that and the other we don't want to eliminate their jobs we want to hire those guys and cross train them we're we're more of a collaborative model than a than a competitive model of business so we make everybody win-win what's your background uh, aviation composites yeah, built a lot of uh, a lot of planes. Started with planes and uh, uh, gravitated to pretty much everything thereafter: yachts, cars, trucks. You know, uh, just a myriad of industrial applications. That uh, you know, they fly me all around the country to go build a, a repulper vat or something of that nature. To you know, like Weyerhaeuser, they they do pulps and uh, paper products. Well, they'd have to reline. Uh, a whole vat and they would call me and my team in to, to go handle this. I went from a liquid to a solid in any shape or form I wanted. That's my background. <laughs> <laughs> so no rebar required in the, in the whole house then? No rebar. Okay. Nope. Okay. And, and, and if we do any kind of rebar because the, the engineering specs are calling for the higher loads, right? Yeah. then we use basalt as rebar. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Basalt is what you see on your logging roads out here. Okay. It's rock, black rock. Well, they weave it into a carbon fiber, and it's only 15% less of the total performance aspects of carbon fiber, but is half the cost of carbon fiber per pound. Two thirty-five, uh, two dollars and thirty-five cents a pound of, of basalt, compared to like four dollars and sixty cents. But if Boeing gets a gets a a wild hair and says, well, we got to make some more triple sevens. Well, they drive the price up to six bucks a pound. So now it's a third of the cost compared to carbon fiber. But it's only 15% less than the actual performance specs of carbon fiber. And and, and you'll see that, uh, like this here, when you, when you see this, you look at it close, you see the little black flecks in there? Can you see that from every, all your angles? Yep. Okay. That's basalt. So like they say, fibercrete, they put, you know, fiber glass into it, same stuff. I just went over, I just put the better stuff in it to exceed any kind of expectations. And it's just as cheap. So why not use the better stuff? So structurally, as far as like um, earthquake engineering? I'm glad you said that, earthquake. We use, we use two different kinds. Uh, two different seismic deterrents. Uh, the Japanese have been doing it for years. Okay? Uh, cups. Two cups on the bottom. Here's, here's one at, at the, um, uh, the foundation level. A cup. Okay? Another cup over the top of it at the bottom of the building itself. And then ball bearings inside of the cup. Oh, wow. So, so once the earth starts wiggling and giggling, right? Yeah. The house stays put because uh. the ball bearings. Okay? And then there's screw jack attenuation where you can bring your house up for like uh, storm surge, okay? Tidal areas, things of that nature. Brings it up and then the earthquake and then you have 
you know, a pile of fishing poles, the screw jack attenuators, and then it allows the house to yeah. just wiggle and move as well with with what's going on below. Okay. Is fireproof? Very fireproof. We have a fire a four hour fire rating on this thing, which is really good. That's you know, fire on the thing for four hours without burning. Is the insulation one hundred percent yeah? Absolutely. And always will be? Always will be. <laughs> okay. Right. So, That's so would That's this the... be a standard wall size or? Yeah, 12 inches. 12 inches is an R80. That gets us into the net zero. That's just, I mean, I used to build houses and okay. so, mm -hmm. yeah, that's off the charts for our value. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's that's what we want. We want to exceed any kind of uh, uh, expectations that are already, already available. Okay, and because uh, a lot of people say, sure, a lot of people say that. Uh, well, is it a is it a green building? Is it uh, lead certified? We blow lead right off the map. They don't even come close to our, our what our specifications are. And once I have it certified by a third party, no one can say boo to me. Good job. Yeah, nice. Thanks, man. That's awesome. I've seen this stuff on um, on the internet and whatnot, but mm -hmm. yeah, I've never actually checked well, it out. Well, hemp, hemp adobe is different than hempcrete. Hemp no, crate, yeah, hemp, I've seen hempcrete uses wood hemp framing crete, uh, and is labor on intensive. Facebook or something. Sure. stuff about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and hemp adobe is it, we we actually we take take the, the we you, we do everything in the factory setting so we control the process. So when the product is delivered to you to the site, then it's ready to go. There's no no nothing behind it. It's you know here it is, put it together, and you get to go right in and live the next day. Talk about the, the monolithic part. Oh, uh, all these structures once once you use the same material, the magnesium oxide, okay, to glue it together, turns it into a monolithic structure. And monolithic structure is, is meaning it's uh, one. So it's building a better egg. You can't crush an egg, can you? You ever try to crush an egg? Yeah. You can't crush it. That's what we do with this. It's the same game, same material, same stuff. So when you lift the walls all up, how do you attach everything? Is it a, some sort of... The details. Yeah, okay. The, male, the male, female components. Like Legos. Like Legos. Okay. And then you take the mud, and and it binds them together. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's so awesome. so so <laughs> as, as, like you're like you're a framer. Yeah. Okay. So from the framing aspect, we we basically just eliminated your job. Okay? Right. Okay. Except there's no framing jobs out there anyway. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, no framing jobs out there. Yeah. Okay. Maybe so, find so, a new one. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so so without without pissing everybody off, we we can just simply go to the people that have uh, you know our our framers from from start you know from uh, uh, what's the the low guy all the way to the top journeyman to the to the bottom and and hire them cross train them yeah. okay and then pay them the same amount that they would make okay with an extra kicker because now we've eliminated that amount of money that would be paid for a month of building. Right, exactly. Into a week's period of yeah. time. And if all guys that were doing construction made prevailing wage, Correct. they would have a ton of money right. to spend out in their community. That's right. And help other businesses grow. So uh, that's right. So yeah, awesome. we're, yeah, we're we're definitely into the economy building and uh, uh, doing everything in a non-toxic, safe manner. So and honestly, you know, I've, I've had people come out of the woodwork around the world, chase me down and uh, talk to me and, and, and of course, you know, we want blah, 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 this, that, and the other. Okay, well, it's always vetting and qualifying and, and, and finding out who's who. But once you get the right people, then we can get this thing out in front of all sorts of people. And at 80 bucks a square foot going to market out of the home, that's 60 bucks less than 140 of right. typical U.S. median prices. Yeah. And we, we throw all the guts into it, minus the uh, the refrigerator, the washer, and the dryer. That's your big. That's your that's your, your that's your thing. That's what you have to do. Other than that, the so house is, cabinetry and cabinetry is already in. Oh wow.
Huh. Yeah, because cool. we can make it all. Countertops, fireplace inserts, retro products. Yeah. Yep. So as far as getting permits to do this, have you ever done one? That's why I'm getting everything certified. Around. That's okay. why I'm getting everything certified. Yeah. I'm moving the whole operation to Reno because I want the less humidity for production purposes only so I can snap this stuff off in 15 minutes, demold it in two hours, and then combine it to come up to this six panel configuration with detents that I'll, you know, have a Lego sticking out that also have a hole going in, the female representation of this. Nice. So when it comes to you by truck, there it is. You know your house is yeah. gonna be finished that day at the end of the day. It's something to really look forward to. Yeah, that's awesome. I'll tear down my house and you can build me a new one. <laughs> no, you, no, you can build it. I'll, or I I'll, can build I'll build it. a house and you can, yeah. you can build it. Yeah. Just get a crane. And, Bring the crane out. Yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's like a one page manual. Yeah. Oh, A, B, C, one, two, three. Pop, 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 pop. Everything lines up. It's already, you know, yeah, congruent yeah. with CD, uh, CNC and uh, CAD CAM programs. Yeah. So nothing that's, we're, we're actually within tolerance some, in some cases up to 60 thousandths of an inch. Oh, wow. Yeah. With this material because it doesn't shrink. It's not concrete. Right. It's magnesium yeah. oxide. Yeah. In my house, during the summer, the cooling and the heating, it'll crack all through the rafters. Mm -hmm. And you don't know exactly what's going on, but you know it's expanding and contracting. Yep, and this stuff doesn't do that because yeah. the thermal bridge is the hemp. Excuse me, the, 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 the hemp is, is not the thermal bridge. It's the insulation which you know disallows the bridging to go from heat cycle here to over here. So if your outside of your house is already hot, the sun, you know, sun, southern exposure always gets hotter ever you know, on that side of the house. But that's a bridge, and it comes in through the whole house. Now you got to, you're sitting there sweating, right. you know. This disallows that whole process from happening. Well, is hemp pretty easy to grow? Exceedingly easy to grow. Do you see, do you see applications in the developing nations for this, and if they can grow their, their own hemp there and just license the manufacturing technology? Yeah, actually, I think coming from my, my side of the house, it would be easier to uh, either get a, a combination of farmers and getting a bulk contract from these farmers to produce X amount of tons in the you know in, in the bulk and being able to grab it ship it use it very simple straightforward stuff okay thank you would you say that it's um, like it could be a, a DIY thing like if you maybe didn't have the skills as a you know, framer. Yeah, and I, I, at that point, I would I would say go back to hempcrete. Yeah, yeah, we're hemp adobe is, is is different in the matter that that we don't want to do it yourself, okay? Because the stuff sets so fast, okay, that we can't we we can't trust you. Can't <laughs> yeah. We can't trust you to yeah, yeah because yeah, you'll screw it up. <laughs> yeah, if you're not experienced, okay. Then you're gonna screw it up. The stuff goes off like a bucket of bondo in the sunlight. That's how fast it goes. And then you've wasted all your money. But you could take your finished product and build oh, your absolutely. house yourself. Yeah, yeah. And uh, once again, we're gonna go ahead and do a number of retro products so that they're available to the core market. Nice. Mm -hmm. Fireplace inserts, especially for our fire rating. You know, all these crazy things. Hearths. You know, they're big business. You, you know that yeah. from the construction world. Yeah, yeah. And you have, uh, you know, teams of esoteric guys showing up out of the blue to, to make these just really cool things and, and makes your house pop. Yeah, yeah. And so we can, uh, we can actually adjust to that market. Water features. Anything. Water features, yeah. Yeah, out, outside, inside stuff. Whatever you know. Right, you yeah. make it normal looking, we can do that. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of texture. A lot of textures here we can, we can... One of the cool things is like, because this material is white, you know, for the most part, that just means we can pigment, okay? We can toss that pigment in there, but we can also take the flexible mold and make it look like, you know, one half of a log for a log cabin, okay? So now this whole thing is made out of magnesium oxide and, 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 and hemp, hemp adobe, right? For a marketing name, that's really all it is we can make that same thing all over again and you'd never know the difference until you went up there and racked your knuckles on it. Yeah. 
That's how accurate it can be. Yeah, it looks like stucco. Yeah, it looks like stucco. <laughs> yeah, but you can't put but your fingernail in it. It's though. expensive to have somebody come to your house and stucco the whole outside. It's Absolutely. 10 grand. Yeah, we, we, we actually had a gal, Carrie Lewis, I'd like to mention her name. Uh, she was doing um, what kind of applications it was uh, in, inside plastering, plastering. Yeah, with, yeah. with, with hemp okay. and, and lime plasters. Yeah, okay. And so I asked her, I said, well, gee, Carrie, here's a huge market just for acoustical tiles of sorts. Right. Or acoustics, period, that you could, you could change the aspect of, of the way the audio runs in your room. And she just sat there and went, oh, my, yeah. Oh, cool! Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, at least I gave her something back, you know, because you know, she was she'd already started on something, and 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 was was teaching people just simply how to, you know, spackle and 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 trowel and do everything, but she, it never occurred to her that that could be you know her calling card. Yeah. yeah. Making acoustical tiles, making acoustical rooms out of this stuff. Any more questions? All right, thank you for your presentation. All right. Yeah. All right. <laughs>